Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Subaru in Ewing, New Jersey to check out a brand new 2023 Subaru Forester. This is the wilderness trim. So we're gonna dive into this, see what it brings to this highly competitive SUV market. And let's dig in. All right, we are looking at the front end of this Forester wilderness. We have that crystal white pearl paint looking good. That big Subaru badge in the middle of all that flat black on the grill with some aluminum trim down below with some skid plate action it looks like underneath that which looks good. We have LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, those Gatling gun uh, LED fog lamps and then we have standard bulbs for turn signals. Really good looking front end on this Forester Wilderness. And then as we move up onto the hood, we have this satin black piece right here in the middle, and that's there to cut down on glare from the sun into the driver's eyes, which I think is a good move on this Wilderness trim. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And of course, coming to the cladding right here, we have again, those Gatling gun shaped uh, fog lamps, and then all this cladding here since this is the wilderness, off-road action is possible in this for sure. And so they use all this cladding here to protect the paint from like branches and underbrush you may be going through on the trails. And that's why we see all that cladding all over the front end of this wilderness. All right, so we have our wheel and tire package on this wilderness. Before we get into the wheels, we're looking at a raised ground clearance on the wilderness compared to other foresters. So we have 9.2 inches of ground clearance on this forester wilderness. So wheel and tires, we have a 17 inch gloss black wheel, Subaru badge in the middle, standard brake and rotors. These are wrapped in Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. 225 on the width, a meaty 60 series sidewall, 17s, all four corners, all wheel drive. Full side profile on this Forester Wilderness. I do like the overall shape of the Forester. Think it's a good looking shape, boxy shape, rugged shape is what Subaru is going for with this Forester Wilderness. You have that flat black cladding on both front and rear wheel well areas as well as the bottom door sills and there's a significant amount of that again like I mentioned on the front to protect it while you're going off-road going to your campsites going to your rock climbing wherever you may go be going off-road this is what that is designed to do I do like the the copper accents especially the wilderness badge the Forester uh, script under down below on that rear uh, door so it is really quite attractive and i think it goes good with these black wheels let me know what you guys think about it in the comments as we come in closer here is the subaru wilderness badge we are flat black on the side view mirror with led turn signals we are color matched on the front and the rear door handle up top again we have this satin black or flat black roof rail with the copper which I think looks really nice. Up top, color match roof, shark fin antenna with a bit of an oversized sunroof. All right, the rear end of this wilderness, we have a small roof spoiler coming off the top. We have our rear wiper down on the lower part of the rear glass, Subaru badge in the middle. We have LED tail lights, LED uh, brake lights, but we have standard bulbs for the turn signals. Forester wilderness on the right side of the tailgate, Subaru all wheel drive over on the left. And then down below, more flat black around the rear bumper area with the exhaust coming out the right side of the vehicle. But it's a good looking rear end. We are under the hood of this 2023 Forester Wilderness. And what are we looking at for a power plant? We have a 2.5 liter, naturally aspirated, flat four engine, mated to a CVT transmission. 182 horsepower, 176 pound-feet of torque. This Forester can tow up to 3,000 pounds, MPGs, 25 in the city, 28 on the highway, 26 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. Before we get to the interior review of this beautiful crystal white pearl Forester Wilderness, you're gonna to wanna to know, Mike, 
how much does this cost? Well, MSRP for the Wilderness Trim without options is $34,020. Now they have added some options onto this particular vehicle. First, option package number 22 for an additional $1,850 is going to give you the 8-inch Subaru Starlink multimedia navigation system with the Harman Kardon speaker system and a power rear tailgate. Then they add wilderness splash guards for an extra 185, door edge guards for an extra 185, the cargo sidewall protector for an additional 105, and the wheel locks for an additional $153. Add in $1,225 for destination and delivery, you're looking at a total MSRP of $37,723. So let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, we have a nice large dead pedal, brake and accelerator, all aluminum finish, which is a really nice touch from Subaru. We have the Wilderness all season floor mats. On the seats, we have power seats for the driver with lumbar, manual adjustment for the front passenger. And then we have this nice interior with the black, with the gold, or copper stitching and then some gray stitching as well nice headrest the Subaru Wilderness badge embossed into the headrests on both front seats nice two-tone design on the seats bolstering feels good not too crazy nice nice job on the seats door panel action we have nice soft touch material up top that Subaru Wilderness tag right there on the door panel we have that faux carbon fiber look along around the black door handle, flat black on the switch gear, armrest pretty soft with that copper stitching. We do, like I mentioned earlier, have the upgraded Harman Kardon system and the seat material, as you can see here, with these little dimples and whatnot in them. This is what Subaru calls their StarTex material, which is supposed to be water repellent and easy to clean out. Once you've had a tough day out on the trails and the inside is dirty, much easier to clean this out. With this material up top we have soft touch again with the copper stitching some black trim here and then underneath a nice large glove box as we move up we have still have tool panel action we don't have the bigger 11.6 um, inch system in the forester yet so we have dual panel action going on up top you do have a, a, a panel up top that's going to give you a lot of different information and you can walk through that information by hitting the info button on the left side of the steering wheel and you can go through a whole bunch of different action on this top panel which is a really really nice touch and I really really like that as we move down here is the 8 inch Subaru Starlink multimedia system again we have Apple CarPlay Android Auto Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth in your phone. We do have navigation in this one. By just hitting the map, now you go to your navigation and it is a touch screen. You wake it up a little bit and it's pretty good as far as the connectivity, or excuse me, as far as the response goes. And this is based on the TomTom system, but not bad. And then if you want to go back to home, you can go back to home, you can go through your apps and the different action you have in here. Finally swiped it back. It Sometimes it works smoothly, sometimes it glitches a little bit, but it is the older Subaru system. As they refresh these cars, they are replacing them with that large vertically mounted 11.6 inch system, but it's gonna give you all the information you need, and I really do like that top. Uh, panel up there. I think that looks cool. Overall not bad as we go into reverse. Nice large backup camera. Nice and clear with trajectory. Takes up the whole screen. No issues with that. Very very good. As we drop down you got a CD player right here in case you want to rock out to some of your old CDs. Here's the home button. Here's your controls for your radio and your volume. Down further four-way hazards, dual climate control action, and once you set that, it actually shows up on the top panel, where you can set it however you would like and sync it together. So that's nice. But that's up on the top panel. Moving farther down, 
As you can see there, we have an aux jack, two USB A's and a 12 volt with an area for some storage. Then we have this gear shift that's going to take you through the eight simulated gears on the CVT. I love the copper. I love the copper stitching. It's a nice gator looking good. Farther down here, you have your electric uh, brake auto vehicle hold. Then you have your X modes right here, which we'll go through when we see the dash. We have our camera view. Then we have our two stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger, two cup holders. And then here is the Subaru key fob lock. The Subaru emblem is unlock, pop the tailgate, panic button. Nice weight. Wish there was a remote start, but there isn't. And then as we come down here, we have more storage in here. And then the armrest, nice and soft, again with the copper stitching. You open that up and you have a nice place in here for storage with an additional 12 volt. Subaru steering wheel, nice leather wrap steering wheel with the stitching, with the Subaru badge in the center, the copper trim down here looking good. On the left, you have your pad for your source and info over on your top display and your infotainment screen. Telephone voice commands. On the over here, you have your adaptive cruise control and then your SI drive for your sportier drive or your comfy, comfier, comfier drive. Oh, brother. Then we have our paddles to go up and down this simulated gears of 8-speed automatic. Here we go with our headlights and fog lamp controls, front and rear wipers on the right, down below, tailgate, SRH off, memory tailgate, bright and dim the dash, traction control off, engine auto stop start off, lane keep assist off. This is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. We get to the dash. We have an analog digital combo, analog gauges for our speedometer and tachometer, and a small four inch display in the center that's going to take you through different information that you may like to see. And to change through this, you're actually going to use the buttons down here on the bottom left of the steering wheel. This will set how you want it to look, and then this will go up and down those menus. To give you the additional information that you may like. So that's where you set that and it's nice and easy to read and it's easy to glance at when you're driving down the road. X mode action on the dash here. You turn the dial to the left. You're going to get your snow dirt X mode. You turn it back to the right. You're going to get your deep snow and mud X mode and when you want to return to normal you push the dial down and you return to your normal and there's your SI drive. I for your more normal drive and S if you want a more sportier drive here in this Forester. Overhead console action in the Forester. Here is the button for your dome lighting. If you want the lights to come on and off when you open and close the door, this switch has to be all the way to the left underneath door. And then when you open the door, the lights will come on. Nice LED lighting in here. And then when you close the door, your lights will dim out. Again, here is the slide now for our sunroof, but the shade is a manual, so you have to open up that shade with your hands. And you can open up the glass one touch, no big deal, nice and easy, and it goes all the way back to that oversized position. And then sometimes you get lucky and that shade will catch and come back together. And not close all the way, but almost all the way. Sun visor, nice with vanity and mirror and lighting. And then, does it slide? No, but you have the extension here that'll take care of that side sun. So that's a good job. Getting in the back seat of the wilderness, the driver's seat is set for my driving position. So we'll just pop on in. And we're in, nice and easy. Look at all this room for my knees. 5 foot 11, plenty of headroom. Again, that nice StarTex material all the way down, no plastic, with the nice copper stitching, which I like, and the seat pocket behind each front seat, and you get two. So you can put something large in here, maybe tuck your cell phone away in the bottom one. So that's a nice touch. Again, those Subaru, Subaru Wilderness tags on the seats to remind you where you are. And there's a lot of places in here to remind you that you're in a Forester Wilderness. And then in the back, we got a little action going on. We have a heat and air vents back here. And then we open this up and we got a couple of USBs. Now these dead switches 
are for your rear out here heated seats if you have that top touring trim but in this one it is not here now as we look at the door panel in the back we have the same nice door panel same design same use of materials same wilderness tag on the back door panel here's the front door panel looking good and here's the back door panel looking the same which is nice we come to the back nice seats same material same stitching no subaru wilderness though embossed into these headrests might have been a nice touch to do it on the front and the back let me know what you guys think and then we have this same nice startex material easy to keep clean repels water and then we have our center armrest it's a little thin it's a little thin in in uh, width but it is nice and soft with two cup holders so they got you covered in the back of this subaru forester wilderness and it's a nice comfortable place to ride back here tailgate area in the forester wilderness now you can pop the tailgate from the dash or from the key fob or you can come to the back and you can reach underneath the subaru badge there's a little button you push that beeps a couple of times nice electric assist on the way up nice electric assist on the way down using this button and then you have a nice amount of space and it's high because it's got you got the boxy shape so you got a lot of height to this cargo area as well as width which is a nice touch you do have the security shade which is removable if you don't want it in there we have the subaru all-weather cargo area mat and then you lift up underneath and you have the wheel locks that i mentioned earlier and then if we can get this out of the way we got our spare tire tucked away underneath that and it's a full size spare which is a nice touch and then in the back here you have your 12 volt in case you need power back here which is a must if you're going to do wilderness trim for sure we got some tie downs on either side the subwoofer for this Harman Kardon sound system and then to get those rear seats down you can either reach all the way up there and pull those little knobs or you can be lazy like me and you can grab these right here and you put, pull them and the seat falls flat and you go over to the other side pull it seat goes flat and now you got even more space for those really much larger items in here as you can see but if you want to get rid of this get i would get rid of this security shade i don't like these things but it seems like all the rage every one of these suvs has them but if you want to get some really big items in here that are tall get rid of this and you'll be all set but it's a really nice space back here a lot of room and a lot of versatility and also you know it's really easy to get the seats down and do whatever you want to do back here and you and you also have a little extra cubby over here on the side so they really got you covered in the back of this subaru wilderness all right here's the window sticker for this 2023 subaru forester wilderness in the crystal white pearl so feel free to pause the video zoom and check out all the options that are in this forester wilderness including the dealer added accessories and now let's take it for a spin all right we are out on the road driving this 2023 subaru forester wilderness edition in this crystal white pearl which is a really good color on here i think <clears throat> and before we get started with the uh, driving dynamics of the review go over a few things first not great visibility out the front glass front windshield side view mirrors side glass rear window great visibility we got the subaru uh eyesight technology in here so you got your blind spot monitoring cross traffic alert lane keep assist pre-collision braking alarm all that action is in this subaru wilderness you got the led lights up front and out back for safety which is a good deal i love those fog lamps in the gatling gun uh shape and vibe for the front end really gives it a little bit of flair and overall i think subaru's really hit the nail on the head with this wilderness vibe inside the car because the brand of subaru is all about getting outdoors and going and doing stuff outdoors and having fun and bringing your dogs and bringing your pets and bringing your uh, friends and your family 
and going out canoeing or camping or hiking or whatever. It's what this brand is all about. And so bringing out this wilderness edition in the Forester, in the Outback, I think was a great idea as it fits so well with the uh, theme, let's say, of what Subaru is all about in 2023. Now, these tires are really, really smooth. I mean, extraordinarily smooth. Uh, you know, these 60 series sidewalls are just going to soak up the bumps on the road and off on the trails. Unfortunately, in New Jersey, we don't have any real off-road trails to go on because everything's paved. But the handling, very nice, very direct, gets the car where you want to point it, it goes. Now, is it tight? Is it sporty? No. If we put it in S, it tightens up the steering a bit, tightens up your suspension, starts giving you a more sporty ride, firms everything up. But is it a sport, sporty car? No. It's a Forester Wilderness. But now the steering is a bit tighter. The shifts, simulated shifts in the CVT are a little bit tighter. So I can see how the S drive is changing things here. But again, it is a, a, uh, a, a vehicle designed for getting you and your passengers and your cargo from point A to point B, from where you would, where you want to go, off-road as well as on-road, and giving you some comfort off-road as well as on-road. Now we have the naturally aspirated flat four in this one, so we don't have the turbo engine, but it gets the car up to speed and down the road just fine. No issues there. You're getting pretty good gas mileage for an all-wheel drive SUV. So can't complain too much about that and how everything is put together and how, how everything is driving. There's a bit of wind noise, there's a bit of tire noise, but nothing too crazy. CVT has these simulated gears, and it, 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 smooth, it's smooth, a little buzzy out of first and second, but then it smooths out, quiets down, don't even really notice it. I'm sure all of you, if you've been following the channel for a while, not a fan of CVTs overall, but in this case, in this Subaru Wilderness, it, it operates just fine, and the simulated gears do quiet, quiet it down quite a bit, and you don't get that constant CVT drone, which is a nice touch. But what I like to see Subaru incorporate some traditional automatic transmissions in their higher end priced products, I still would, yes. Now we're coming down the road. We're going to do an emergency stop right here in three, two, one. Came straight to a stop throughout the anchors, nice and linear, no pulling the wheel. taking off again down the road some speed bumps coming up here see how that feels nice and easy over those and again nice and smooth on the gravel the suspension we have the extra shocks that are that have a a, a larger uh, travel because we're off road we have a higher ground clearance as well and so it really feels good in here even though this is not like a rock crawler but if you want to get off on some trails it is going to do just fine 
getting you to the campsite or to the boat ramp or through some off-road trails in a in a park come back through here one more time it's just really easy steering's really good shocks and suspension feel really good the big sidewalls are soaking up the bumps no problem it's a little bit wet through here so I'm being very careful don't want to spin the tires too much but it's just a really really nice experience so I think if you're going off-road on the trails in this you're gonna be just fine uh, with this wilderness trim and of course all that cladding up front even though it might not look beautiful it might not even be good looking in some people it has a specific purpose to make sure that if you're going through trails and you're having branches or brush coming off the front end of the car, that cladding is there to protect that paint in the front end of the car from those types of things. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of how all the cladding looks. I don't think it looks attractive. I know some people do, but you need to also understand and appreciate why it's there on this wilderness trim and why they've given more of it on this wilderness trim opposed to a standard Forester so and I was critical of that the last time I drove the 20 Forester wilderness I guess I really didn't appreciate why it was there and I was too quick to judge so I am on this review correcting myself so if you saw that previous review you're like Mike you're telling a different story now well, that is why. Because over time, when you look at these things, and you're in a lot of different cars, you become to appreciate what car makers are trying to achieve for the mission of their brand. And with this Forester Wilderness, I think Subaru achieves all of that. In all aspects of this vehicle. If you're looking for a SUV that you can take off road lightly because I don't think you could rock crawl in this. It does have some skid plates underneath, which I think is a great idea. It does have 9.2 inches of ground clearance, which is big. That is a big number. Some full size pickup trucks do not have that kind of ground clearance that this vehicle has. So you can do probably more than just some light trails, but not like Moab, let's say. So if you're looking for that vehicle to do that type of work in, to take it out, at least from the east coast here of the United States, take it out to the Appalachian Mountains, go up some mountain trails, you know, so you can go biking or wherever, whatever you're going to do, hiking, camping, this thing is going gonna, is gonna to knock it out of the park. Plus, you're going to get good gas mileage. You got the symmetrical all-wheel drive in this Subaru, so you're not going to have any problems, I don't believe, getting in and out of, of problems in the Subaru as far as getting stuck and whatnot. You can tow up to 3,000 pounds. So if you got some stuff that you can't fit in the vehicle or on top and you need to hook up a U-Haul or something and tow some stuff, no problem at all. So they have a really, really practical, versatile vehicle here in this Forester wilderness. And I think Subaru has really done a great job on this vehicle. And if you're looking for something like this then definitely put the Forester Wilderness on your list to test drive. Now I believe the 2024 Forester is going to have a bit of a refresh. It's going to have that new infotainment system in it rather than the dual panel action and the smaller screen. So there may be some updates next year that make this more desirable for you. Opposed to buying a 2023, let me know what you think about that. Or would you rather go with this setup inside and, and go with the 2023? I don't believe there's going to be much of a change in power plants in the Forester, but I could be wrong. If you have any additional information on that, please, please feel free to share it in the comments. But we're going to start heading back to the dealership now here after this brief drive in this Forester Wilderness. But let me know what you think in the comments. Does this kind of vehicle fit in with what you're 
what you want out of a car? Do you want to go in a different way? Maybe Subaru Outback, maybe you need to go bigger to the Subaru Ascent, or are you gonna go outside of the Subaru family of vehicles and go with some of the competition? And believe me, there's plenty of competition with this uh, off-road trim in the SUV world. There's a lot going on. Everybody seems to have one from Ford, to Dodge, to Chevy, to Toyota, Honda, uh, Kia, Hyundai, everybody's got one of these things. Let me know how you would go in the comments or whether the Subaru Wilderness uh, Forester is the way to go for you. But we're gonna wrap this review up right here. So I wanna thank Sioka Subaru in Ewing, New Jersey for allowing the channel access to this 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness all-wheel drive for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.